Breaking glass. Breaking glass. Have it sitting there when you get there. 45 down on you, basically. Kind of okay. top down, 45 down. It creates an edge light on your face. So half of your face is shadow, half of your face is light. Mm. Does that contribute to why I have a shiny forehead a lot? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And your forehead's so pasty, son. <laughs> you got that shine, boy. <laughs> I don't know. Some of those thummies you do. Got that shine, boy. Some of those thummies you put up there, but it's so freaking <laughs> shiny. You feel like the Mr. Clean. Yeah. A little right. bit, a little hawk down the middle, but just a shiny dome. Like, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, boy. Ooh. What's up here? Here we go. There we go. Yeah. Nice. These are the last almost, two in the fridge. Yeah, bud. I was gonna say we're almost out of our supply. So yeah, I don't think the word's gotten to Jocko yet to sponsor <laughs> us just yet. <laughs> and maybe we'll have to try for a smaller energy drink company. Oh well, yeah, there is that. Or we corner him at um, TAC Big Sky. Yeah, he's not super cornerable. <laughs> he's really not. Um, I know. And I'm sure the he's not <laughs> the trade show I'm going to and. Vegas, he won't be at that. Mm -mm. He only goes to the tax. No. I actually had a very interesting conversation with one of my sales reps earlier today about the relevance of uh, target shooters and their value anymore. Oh. It was a very, and not a conversation I expected to have. He, they were, he was pointing out the cost of certain things mm -hmm. as you're paying for things. And this is, yeah. this probably relates directly back to, um, to Botech's dismissal of uh, Tim and Kyle. Yeah. He was trying to, evaluate how what what is this really worth you know what how much cost is really there we're red and good um and uh he was also of the same mind i'm not going to disclose who this was or what company because yeah, no, i wouldn't be good. super fair but um but that it's not like the the amount of money they spend on a person to hopefully win some tournaments and drum up some business doesn't does they they can't collate it back to actual growth of their business? Well, part of the problem with that is those tournaments don't get that much exposure. They're not yeah. playing in front of the amount of fans that most professional sporting events are, right? Correct. Yeah, and that for, a lot of formats you can't. Now the Vegases and stuff those get pretty good coverage, but you start doing outdoor stuff and it yeah, but good coverage relative coverage. to other sports. I mean, a lot of room for growth. Yeah, but yeah. The, his his justification was okay. We can spend the money on that, or we can spend the money on, you know, like multiple tack booths where you're going to see 2,000 to 5,000 customers. Yep. In your face, like constantly. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, it seems like that that's part of why that's grown is it's hit the right mark on everything that uh, the average person wants to be able to do. They want to test their skills a bit, they want to challenge their gear a bit. You know, they want to go to a, a destination, not just a, a place, you know. And uh, possibly, they want to see people that they think see, are interesting. Possibly yeah. see some people that they think are interesting and meet hopefully like-minded people in that giant environment because uh, there's just so many of them, and uh, and be able to actually like see vendors and products and things and mm -hmm. get specials on them. So um, it'll it'll be interesting to see his, his his exact description to me was target archery is dying. Now I don't know if that's true, but. He felt well. like the that it's only a matter of time before, as manufacturers will always analyze where their money's spent and where it can be spent better. Yeah, maybe just right. the ad dollar shift <laughs> is spending. Um, sure, but it's the the value of uh, a champion target archer versus the value of a I guess you'd call it an influencer or mm -hmm. something. Which I hate that phrase. I hate but that term. I hate yeah. that term. But the 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 person that's constantly communicating with the public, um, the value of it shifting. So, and I I literally had asked him. I was like, so where do you think the most value is? And he directed back towards you know, people in the socials and whatnot. So yeah. I mean, it as much as as much as Botech got hammered for firing Kyle and Tim, especially when they were under contract which they had them written up to where they could, which is kind of, what's the point of a contract if you can just terminate a contract? Well, there's two that. people that sign a contract, right? So Sure. But as the, from the Archer side, I'm sure they have a lot less leverage to negotiate contracts. That makes sense. But yeah. the, um, the end result of, you know, that not holding the weight of what it was, which I know both of them were getting. I don't, I don't know Tim's, but I know Kyle's. And, and usually and contracts have buyouts. Out. I don't know if theirs did or didn't. Um, 
But I doubt they'd be as salty as they are about it if there was a buyout. It doesn't feel like there was. It does not appear like there was because yeah, they so, both seem a little salty. Um, Which, just, uh, just give I a quick it. brief of, of that series of events for someone who hasn't caught up to that. So there's a there's a renewal time a year every year that um, contracts expire and contracts get renewed for paid shooters. Um, and that's everyone who takes a check from a company, mm-hmm. not me, just being clear. But there's a lot of people that take a check from a company, and not just Target Archers, but other other social media influencers. They get checks from companies, um, which is, makes you kind of question whether you should be really following or listening to what they're saying about those things, because it's their job at that point to speak positively about that product. But there's a time of year where you close out a contract or renew a contract, and the crappy part largely about how that went down, not just that guys that were under contract were cut, but they were qu- cut after most manufacturers had filled their contracts. So not only did they remove their employment, but they removed their employment like after everybody else got hired. So that's why I think that's why it probably sits so sour with them. And it sits sour with me too. As I mean, it, it'd be like, what's a good way to put this? It'd be like... Um, Cutting a guy from your team after the after the league year started or after the trade deadlines are over and whatnot, mm-hmm. or um, keeping a guy past a certain point when everyone else has filled a position, and then you let the guy go. It didn't sit well with me doesn't, either. Doesn't give yeah. doesn't give him a, an opportunity a, as good of an opportunity to get or negotiate for another job. Um, and they both ended up at Matthews, which isn't a shock to me because that's a that's an independently owned company. It's a owner operator. It's not a group. And when Whenever you have a group, a group's going to analyze the money spent. Where an uh, individual owner, if he thinks it's worthwhile, he'll just do it. Just send it, yeah. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to answer to anybody. If Matt thinks it's worth it, Matt says do it. It's less corporate. He care. Yeah. It's zero corporate. It's what Matt says goes. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a couple of people that are close to him in there, but in general, it's just it's amazing, really, when you think about it, that that's the most successful company that has done as well as it has, and it's one dude owns it and controls it must have his head on pretty good yeah that's off matt so so to catch him up to speed kyle and um tim gillingham were let go at at the end of the season and it seemed very abrupt and it didn't seem like it was handled very well and uh it ruffled a lot of feathers um from people that i think follow the industry very closely and i i understand why if you follow archery hooligan or archery let down or any one of those on instagram you got a a whole lot of giggles out of Mm. like (laughs) it's just just hammering on them with Mm. ridiculous things it was freaking hilarious yeah but there there was an awful lot of uh sourness and that and the unfortunate part not to interrupt what you're saying i'm sorry but um botech already struggled with having a good reputation in the target world like if you told people you were shooting a Botech in the target world, they would raise their nose at you. And then they go out and actually hire like the best available people and then turn around and terminate them like that. It's like, and I think that's just a good example of a, of a, a company that's owned by a group that's being managed and there's new managers all the time. And maybe they don't know the history of what has gone on in that company or whatnot, but gosh, it would sure be nice if, um, <laughs> if they, they didn't do it that way. I don't yeah. know another way to say it. it was yeah, just, no, I agree. It, I, don't, I don't ever remember it being that poorly done by anybody. Um, and I've, I've been in this been around. 30 years. I don't I don't ever remember. Which, mind you, we are in the social, me- so, the social media age, and we weren't, you know, 10, 15 years ago to where maybe these things didn't get come out as clearly and blatantly. But when you when you terminate somebody these days, they can go on podcasts and talk about it. They can yep. go on, you know, they can go on Publix and talk about <clears> it. <throat> um, and it was, it was handled poorly. And both of them mentioned it was handled poorly. They thought, so I don't think I'm speaking out of turn there. I may bore, may bore be repeating what was already said. Yeah. Yeah. It, and what were we going before that was the ad spend is shifting Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. So, I feel a little bit like I'm living in the future because I've watched other industries evolve before archery has. Mm-hmm. And what you're describing is a massive shift in what I've seen in other industries. Yeah, golf particularly. Golf's a big industry. Produced the first billionaire athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's been a mega shift in in ad spend. 
yeah. and where they're spending it. And uh, it's different, man. You know, things change, time evolves. And, yeah, people put their trust in other places. Yeah, you know? I, I think there's definitely a, a lot of truth to that. And when you start to understand, <clears throat> for example, the amount of people you reach on a regular basis, mm-hmm. just so let's say you, for example, the amount of people you reach on a regular basis that tune in and see you every most every week and the amount of views you stack up, and the amount of trust you stack up, like, you understand why. I mean, right? I get it. I get but it. But it's it yeah. could be hard for someone else to understand or see that when yeah. they, they may not understand how many people you can reach through independent media. Well, and I, I, I can see where, like, where somebody like Kyle might not be able to look at it and go, because they're, they're, they're going to focus on what they feel is more influential. And we always have right. some some bias towards ourselves too, right? Like I I try not to. At I first, try not I think, to too. I think it's but... I I I don't value it as much as it's probably valued <clears throat> personally. Yeah. I, I think I try to go the opposite of it. Um, for the longest time, I wouldn't even look at it. Yeah. Like I but, think it was three years or four years before I'd even look at something. But if we were premier target shooters, I mean, we would probably feel there was more value in what we did than there was because, you know, to get to that level, you have to believe in yourself, right? Oh sure. So. And I'm sure there's some mix in the middle, but what you're describing is like reach a lot of people. Well, and I think the reality of this being fair about it, like let's take it, let's take target archery as a whole in their level of influence. A guy that finishes 30th on average, that's very public and very involved and very helpful is probably way more influential than the guy who finishes first. that doesn't ever post and doesn't ever communicate with people and just kind of ghosts. I would think, and I would think that from a reality of how many people are you really moving the needle on. So I think if target archery is going to survive in the long run, as far as it being a place where revenue is spent, um, the people that they're going to spend it on better be heavily involved with the public portion of it and not just, you know, shy away from it. Oh, yeah. And Paige is a great example. Like they got rid of two and they kept one. And which one did they keep? The one that's heavily involved in the public and the social part. You know, granted, she's still the the most talented woman on top of it, but the one that was more involved socially is who they kept. And they got rid of the ones that weren't nearly as involved socially. I know Tim's uh, Tim's trying; he's trying to get more involved in that and more public and whatnot. Um, but I th- I think we're entering an era where that's going to be a a pretty big part of the ask if they're going to get paid. Well, that's going to have more to do with who gets paid and who doesn't. Yeah. It'll certainly make making. a person more valuable. Yeah. Um, you know, Levi Morgan has done a good job preparing himself for this era for years. Like, mm-hmm. he's been regular through his media channels. Mm-hmm. Um, a parallel, another industry, have you ever heard of Brandon? I hope I don't butcher his last name, but it's Palinek or Palaniak. He's a professional fisherman out of Hayden. Okay. He's won, he's won like, the Bass Tour big stuff. Mm-hmm. And... He has a YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. He's active on Instagram. He's like he's like the younger generation fisherman who's a perfect example of how to do social media the right way. Mm-hmm. It's pretty interesting we have him nearby. I just learned about him like six months or a year ago. But, hmm. yeah. Um, nice. Has, uh, I, I forget what the awards are at the highest level, like the Bassmaster stuff, Bassmaster Fisherman of the Year. I think he's won it once or twice. Hmm. Interesting. And yeah, I had he, no idea. He all counts. Seems cool, yeah. All right, on. That's cool. Yeah, I'll have to look them up. So, just another parallel industry and example of someone doing a good job. Um, where are we going with all that? We started with just. It was a conversation I had this morning that I thought was yeah. good. And it, I, and I, it is interesting. I didn't think about even talking about it on here until, for some reason, we sat down. It popped in my head and went, "Ooh, I should yeah. talk about that." It is interesting. It is yeah. interesting. Climate's changing, and um, I want to see everyone do well. Well, and but, honestly, I think that's probably smarter. I mean, the the more I think we've touched on this before, but the um, we talked about how many more people are involved in like attack than an ASA, and it's like there's like eight ASAs, and it's got the same seven hundred or eight hundred people at all of them. It's the same people, right? Meanwhile, you go to you know you go to eight different attacks, and you probably see eighty percent different people minimum at each one, and there's way more people at it. And those are people that are spending money. That's not a cheap thing to go do. I mean, it's not stupid expensive. The average guy can afford it. But, I mean, you're traveling. Uh, frequently when I would talk to people at those things, 
multiples, most of them were flying. Like it was amazing how many people flew from ways away because they couldn't get into this one, but they got into that one, and that's where they chose to fl- they chose to go. Um, they're just they're an event where you're not keeping score, and it's just you and your friends dicking around, kind of is really what it boils down to, and trying to make it challenging. And shooting the shit, busting balls. Shooting the shit, busting balls. Going for a hike. Is the most popular thing Getting in existence. Getting to test existence. your gear. Yeah, it's the most popular thing in existence. And he had, uh, he had brought that up too, and he said, I'm going to get I'm gonna get this wrong, but there's like a mountain fest and then a... Uh, mountain archery mountain fest. Archer, well, there's, there's a mountain archery fest and a mountain challenge. Northwest mountain challenge. Well, and he said the mountain archery fest does better than the, than the challenge because they're not keeping score. Mm. And it's like people aren't getting that. It's like if you just... Put it out there for fun. You're going to get more attendance in the long run. You are because they're no, they're not feeling threatened, and they don't have to publicly put their score up. So if they shoot like shit, they don't have to share that. Mm-hmm. You know. And granted, you go to a tournament, and don't turn your scorecard. You don't turn your scorecard. Not a big deal. But the reality of it is the intimidation factor is a lot of why those people people don't participate. And I just wish, I wish more formats got it and understood it. And it's like target archery is like ignorant to it. Like they have no clue that, hey, you'll get way more people to show up to these things if you stop keeping score or if you try to make it fun or try to have it be a different type of format. Um, and it's it, it's proven already. Like you can absolutely see it and prove it now. But, I mean, there's still a market for tournaments that determine who is the best. There is, but if they're not putting a whole bunch of money into them, how much of a market, how much, how are they going to do, yeah. really? Like, if you're no longer paying everybody that's there to be there a decent amount of money, right? Like, how popular will it maintain being? Mm. Is well, so a little bit of your concern is target archery is dying. Well, so that that's what he said. Yeah. I'm just putting that out there. I'm, I did, I'm not saying, hey, target archery is dying. But he's got a valid point. Like, if you start, we don't have outside money in that sport. That the money from that sport comes from that sport. If they stop putting money into it or start pulling back how much money goes into it, because at the end of the day, and I used Matthews as an example, the bow manufacturers stopped going to the trade show because it wasn't cost effective. They weren't the big ass booths that they had to pay for and the amount of money it cost, the amount of employees they brought in, mm-hmm. the cost of shipping all that stuff in there to be able to hold an event and whatnot. They just stopped going. And Matthews was the first one to stop going. It's like they're doing a cost analysis and going, this isn't worth it. So, how far is it before they start looking at target archery and going, eh, I don't know if this is worth it and start pulling their money out of it? Well, I think ebbs, things ebb and flow and evolve. I don't know. I, I know there's a way. And I don't necessarily have that answer yet to just make the viewing experience more compelling. A format that would make it more television friendly and fan friendly would be great. There needs to be there, yeah. That evolution needs to happen at some point, and there needs to be good media coverage of that event. It needs to be something that's invested in and um, cr- creates a compelling story that people want to watch. I mean, even for say like the Rushmore Rumble. Uh, I just had a guy with an iPhone going live. Mm-hmm. There were thousands of people watching live. What if there was a more a way to create a more compelling ending and there was good media coverage? How many people could be watching live? It could right. be tens of thousands. And sure. if it's tens of thousands, I mean, there are other events that that make it on tens of thousands of live viewers. And you see this with some of the older, like, Lancaster videos get a lot of views mm-hmm. um, from that event that's coming up this weekend. Well, a large portion of them is Justin Grimes watching them over <laughs> yeah, and over. Yeah. I asked, asked me, how but, many times have you watched this? <laughs> but it's a good, compelling ending. They've yeah. got good media coverage. They've done a nice job They've with that. They've done a really good job of creating especially, a format that's entertaining. And especially within well this industry. Uh-huh. It's very well done. And some of those old videos stack up hundreds of thousands of views. So, you know, archery is one of the man's oldest sports or activities or disciplines uh, there's there's a way to make the um the competitive side compelling but it may just need to evolve a little bit yeah it's going to take a different format i'm sure it'd be very difficult to um to televise what they currently do for the most part other than indoor 20 yard stuff because it's pretty easy to break it down and position people next to each other and cover it mm-hmm. and i i do definitely take my hat off to Lancaster because they definitely are the most 
interesting format to watch. Like it's it's entertaining, and it's like they they'll shoot an arrow and then stop and talk to the guy. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, I'm like, yeah. leave me alone. I'm trying to focus. <laughs> I, I ask them questions about their gear and stuff. In I the question of a stuff. little bit about that, like just yeah. pre-record that kind of thing or yeah. whatever. But they have the lighting, they have the shoot down, mm-hmm. it's compelling, they have the button on the target, you know, that makes yeah. it more compelling. Yeah, they got good stuff on So there. it's a cool format. And um, I'd like to see some sort of outdoor format or greater distance format that you could pull that off with. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Um, if you could figure out something that works in that environment and... And, and I, make it make it uh, consumable where people would like to watch it. Because, I mean, especially when you're looking at, like, YouTube videos and whatnot, you can get, you know, fifty to 100,000 views on a YouTube video. How come you can't make a format of archery competition that would get those kind of views? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, no-brainer. The the talent is there. It's just the the story behind it isn't there, and the camera work and the media coverage isn't there. Um, I, I don't really see a way with, like, a current ASA event how you would cover all of the event. But I can certainly see a way where you could make this shoot-off more compelling uh, with better media coverage, and maybe that's the part that gets televised. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm thinking out loud a little bit here. You could do that for sure. Um, but would... archery is fun. It's cool. It's It's got momentum. And uh, the just the, the, the live coverage of it, the media coverage of it, you know. Think about other sports. Like, there are announcers you know about, right? Mm-hmm. Do you know about an archery announcer? No, oh, PJ. I know about PJ at Lancaster. Oh, PJ. But oh, PJ. who's that personality that's like helping tell that story? And then uh, Greg Poole. Yeah. Yeah, those two. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones you typically hear. Yeah. And, you know, there's there, there's got to be a solution to this for sure. Um, and it would really be really cool to find some resolve in it. Because at the end of the day, we we want this sport to grow. I'll tell you what, if you and I decide to move forward with this archery event here, mm-hmm. you and I will create a very compelling video. I'll give you that. With a small, you're, probably, you're probably pulling that off. With a small team of people. So why can't it happen at a larger scale? Right, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just, uh, it can. Well, so, we only got 3,800 views to go. <laughs> Or 3,800 subscribers to go. <laughs> oh, nice. Almost a 50. Getting there. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That No, that would be cool. Some kind of scramble type deal. That, that'd be neat. But, man, you got to make it hard. Like, if you're going to if you're gonna be able to take the best guy's shot, those got to be some hard shots. But once again, if you do that, then you have a more compelling thing to follow. Right? Like, some of this stuff's not that challenging, and everyone's yeah. just, like, going like that. You know, if you make it where it's, like, hard like really hard like maybe even hard to hit the target almost some of the stuff like tackle yeah. too is pretty dope i mean that it's i would think you know obviously arrows exploding and guys missing targets and things like that are more entertaining to watch than a guy drive tack in the middle of the target over and over i think in general i think the average person would find it that way so maybe that's what it needs to look like you know maybe it needs to look like stupid challenging and feel near impossible yeah not um not silly, but yeah, there's definitely definitely a way to do it. Um, yesterday, no, two days ago, Monday, I started what I'm calling the 60 day dial. And maybe you want to maybe you want to start with me. 60 day dial. What is this? Um, I'm gonna spend the next 60 days just dial, dialing in my fitness and nutrition. Honestly, um, historically. Winters have always been challenging uh, from fitness and nutrition perspective, and I've always gained weight in the winter. But as a younger person, you gain less weight and you lose it faster. Yeah. So it's like, you know, maybe you gain 15 or 20 pounds, and then the spring, six weeks, that could be gone. Mm -hmm. But as I've gotten older, gain more weight, and then it's harder to taper off. Sure. You know? Um, So I'm going to spend the next 60 days... Just really dialing in my nutrition and um, getting back to where I, I want to be, just to create some momentum for the year. So, what do you define as dialing in your nutrition? <sighs> Mainly, it's not rocket science. Uh, for me, I'll always eat a clean breakfast, and all I'm trying to do is eat whole foods, mm-hmm. right? But in the winter, I'll start eating sweets. I'll start eating ice cream. Ice cream is the kryptonite, mm-hmm. and uh, 
You've, you've shared this with me yes. before. I'm aware it's your, yes. it's your soft spot. Ice and pizza. I like pizza a lot. Dude, I just bought a freaking pizza oven. Yeah. Like a legit. And it freaking works good. Oh, man. Does that mean I can't eat pizza? I mean, you can do whatever <sighs> you want. But the way I'm going to do it, 60 days, dial it in. Uh, I want to lose more than 20 pounds. That would be a safe bet. You know, 30 would be a stretch, but I'm hoping to get there. Mm-hmm. And... um yeah, I just want to make that public because I used to be... Hold you accountable. <laughs> I, yeah, I want to be accountable. I want to be publicly accountable. Mm-hmm. And I used to really be able to snap in when it came to things that required discipline, like particularly nutrition and fitness. If I mm-hmm. wanted to do something, it was like, hey, I could lock in and I could get it done six, eight, 12 weeks, whatever it took. And man, these last couple of years have been challenging. And it's been challenging for me. Louie. It's been challenging for me, I think, because I don't have a direct fitness goal. I've accomplished a lot of the things I wanted to accomplish, Mm -hmm. uh, whether it came to some feat of strength or some CrossFit feat. Um, CrossFit was what I did for a long time. It was one of the things that brought Dan and I into the same circle, Mm -hmm. uh, was doing CrossFit. And there's a point where I got really good at that. And then, you know, the next level was a lot more time and energy, and maybe you don't even get there. But... I haven't had like a real defined fitness goal these last couple of years, and that's made it challenging for me to lock in. So just for the next 60 days, my only real goal is just the weight loss. Just oh, focus dude. up. I, I can't start that right now. I'm going to be gone all next week. And yeah. Guaranteed there's no way to maintain that well in that environment. I'd uh, I, I'd consider it after that, though. Yeah. I, eat, eating clean is not terribly hard for me. Yeah. But it's something I just wanted to make public because I want to be pub- I want to hold myself publicly accountable. So, yeah, hopefully every week you come back and I got a little more jawline <laughs> when they come back and watch this. Yeah, there you go. We can and also... Look at it week by week. So that's something that's important to me. These next 60 days, I'm going to lock in. But did you know we got Karen? We got Karen? We got Karen. Oh, got to tell me this. <laughs> you and me got Karen. When? Um, and I how? Don't, I don't know when it happened, but I, I check in on our reviews every once in a while because it's important to us. We need reviews. Oh, did we officially get a bad review? <laughs> yeah, we got our first one. Oh, so man. we had about two hundred five star reviews between Apple and uh, Spotify, and someone on Apple left us a two star review. Mm. Man, I know you knew so it was going to happen sooner or later, but we got Karen. Got Karen. So we need we need the people to flood the reviews. Yeah. And out Karen the Karen. A two star. What do you call that? Two stars. Yeah, two star. Why would wow, you what? even listen to a podcast for an hour and give it two stars? Oh, do you have to listen to the whole thing? Do yeah, you I don't know. Maybe they just caught a blur. Mm. Maybe they're anti-Mohawk. It could be. <laughs> it's, prob- it's probably somebody who doesn't like my profanity. That's probably what it is. It could be profanity. It could be profanity. Sorry. But we're just two guys bad, keeping but... it real. You know, I would yeah. rather... I just want to be real. You know, if we're going to talk for an hour every week for Why? a long time... Why leave a two-star? Why wouldn't you just leave a one-star review? I don't know. Like, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Huh. All right. But we need you to flood. We broke our streak, though. I we was need, like, hey, I those know. are all five. We need That's you to flood amazing. the reviews, particularly on the Apple side, because we get about half of our watch comes from Apple, half of our watch comes from Spotify, and we got way more Spotify reviews. And our poor review is on Apple, so we need you to flood the reviews. And out, out Karen the Karen, what do you call that move when you out Karen and Karen? That's a good question. It needs <laughs> to have a phrase. I wonder if we can look it up. Yeah. I'm just gonna look at this real quick. So let's see. Yeah, check it out. Go to go to the Apple Podcast app and then you will see we've been tainted. Well, we still have five stars on Spotify. Woo! Yeah. 150. 152. Yeah. Yeah. Apple. What's a good goal for our Spotify reviews? We're at one fifty two right now. Do we want to be what, two hundred by the end of February? Or oh, more? That wouldn't be bad. Um just do we have to? I don't know if we can really give that that way. I mean, it'd be nice. Should we offer something if we get it a bunch or something, or give away something, or what do you what do you think? Yeah, I don't know. This is literally I mean, just like off talking the cuff. right now. Yeah, I didn't even know. I didn't even know we got Karen. Um, <laughs> hmm. What's the date? Well, this doesn't even come out. It'll be February. How many reviews have we been getting a month? Have you keeping track of that? At Not all? how many we get per month. I just watched the number mm-hmm. grow. But it's it's reasonable we could be over 200. Oh, I think that's an yeah. easy goal 
yeah. for if because you're giving it more than a month from now. But yeah. this will be out about a month. About, this will be out in the first part of February, wouldn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> we'll brainstorm on it. But what's a reasonable thing to give away for that? I mean, it's gonna not a big ask. All you got well, how do we even track the people though? There's no real. Is that you can't track way, people yeah. through that, can you? Other than entering their name in a link or something, trying to give something away. Yeah, but then you don't know if they actually were the person that gave you a review. Yeah. Oh, huh. anyway, that's a tough one. Man, I was trying to give something away there. Yeah. Bummer. Yeah. Well, we got to think about some of that. Yeah. And we got to decide if we're going to do this archery event thing, because I think um, we could we could give stuff away to that. You know, that'd be cool. Sure. Free entry or yeah. whatever. Yeah. That might, that's going to be tricky with how many people and where to put vehicles and schedule times and whatnot, because at a certain point you're going to run into a problem. Who's calling me? Yeah, the parking thing is... is Potential spam. It, the parking not. thing is the only thing I, I would worry about is how many people could park here and move through here. But we can limit... Then, you know, obviously we can limit the amount of entries, and then it can be via tea time, so mm -hmm. people aren't... All showing up at the same time. Yeah, I think the issue with that one, the only one you'd really have is will they leave after they do their thing? Because then you probably to, not, because everyone's going to hang out for the shootout. Everyone's going to want to hang out and watch. So then you have to be able to park a certain number of vehicles. I mean, when we had uh, my, wanna... when we had my dad's funeral, there was like 150 people here, and we just parked out in the field that was out in front of the house, kind of where where I want to build that shop, and it didn't fill up a third of the field. Oh, okay. So you know, if does you that were, interfere though with your sheep? No, we just put them over in that one. They're over yeah. in that one right now. I'm just teasing. Yeah, only only Louie interferes with our sheep. <laughs> yeah. And chickens. And chickens. Chicken hawk. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think we could probably get away with... I mean, if it was 150... 250, we get away with 250, 300, if they're all parking over there. If it was 150 people, that would be... I think that'd be sick. That'd be probably plenty. You know? I think that would be easy if we're not charging for it. Like, if it's a free thing. I mean, you you get that many for a oh, 3D Oh, for sure. I think you'd here. have to, don't you think you'd have to charge for something? Well, do I? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it depends, yeah. I don't know. I'll think about that, I guess. Because if you didn't charge for it, then how would you limit demand? Well, you'd have the certain number of signups and when they're done, they're done. Right. Then that would that would limit your oh, demand. Oh, in our, my recent YouTube video, um, we asked people to give us obscure tax to go to. Mm. And did you see uh, what was the most popular one? I didn't even see you did that. Okay. Well, then take a guess at which which one would be most popular. San Antonio. The most requests. I would say that was probably third or fourth. I'll give you just a couple more. I'll give you a warm or cold. Yeah, let's do that. Well, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, what's the closest one to New York? <laughs> which one's the closest one to New York? I don't know. I don't know all of them. I don't either. <laughs> Isn't there but one you, like Pennsylvania or something? That's the one. Yeah, because it's probably closest to New York, and you said more people listen from New York than anywhere, so that would probably be the one you'd get. Yeah, I think New York's fallen a little bit on our state list. But, yeah, a lot of people recommended uh, it's, Seven Springs, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people for Seven Springs. Quite a few people for Vermont. There, I guess there's a hill in Vermont that – is pretty cool. Somebody said it would be the best filming backdrop. But then San Antonio was also right there. Oklahoma was also right there. And uh, maybe Colorado. But I was surprised the East Coast was... It was overwhelming how many so people said... So basically none of the ones we were already going to go to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'd have to look at that oh, really to make man. that work. Does it, but... does it cost to fly back to Pennsylvania, I wonder? Yeah. It's uh. probably not any different than flying to San Antonio. It's just time, you know. Yeah, time it takes longer. But I've never, I've never seen, I've never been to the Northeast, so I don't know. I don't hate it. I never have either. I was gonna go. My um, my sister had a uh, an Airbnb that she owned. It oh. was over over that way. And but she ended up selling it, and I never got to go. She offered. Um, you know what I would love to do? That timing was bad, and I couldn't do it. That's not reasonable for this year, but I think it'd just be the most fun and fun for. An experience would be just to do like a little tour with uh, maybe one of those cool vans you sleep in or something like that. 
and then just drive through a week to week. Oh, so you want to know what it's like to be homeless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I guess it wouldn't work that well because those things are every weekend and not every day. Yeah. Because you'd be have to spend week. weeks to tour, and that, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. No, you'd probably, in that scenario, you'd probably have to buy one, a used one, and then sell it when you're done or something mm-hmm. to be effective. I mean, if That'd you rent one. That'd be kind of one, unreasonable. If you rent one, you're going to have to you're gonna pay for a quarter of it by the time you're done, probably. Because I've always thought if you could do a road trip loop and make content along the way, like stop at so-and-so's archery shop, schedule a shoot-off in this town, it would be just the coolest way to meet people and, you know, do a vacation slash content loop. You could yeah. if you were a full-time content creator. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And didn't have a yob. <laughs> There's that whole time thing too, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess the uh, options and opportunities that you have as you go could get quite massive, you know, if you get to a certain point. But, and with, uh, for me, with the business growing the way it has, and there's still so much to do and so many uh, uh, improvements to make and growth to growth, growth steps to get past, um, that I don't know how much time I can really be gone, but that would yeah. be cool. I mean, it would be neat. You've, um, you've already committed to quite a year so far. And, yeah. Like more travel than I'm used to seeing you do. Well, it's way more than I've ever done. Let's see. Um, I leave for Vegas on Monday, which when this comes out, I'll be probably done with Vegas and back from Vegas. Shooting uh, which bow? Shooting a Title 38 that I got five days ago. In which color? So today is... Oh, bright-ass yellow, baby. <laughs> um, today is January 24th that we're filming this on. And uh, I have had my title... Today's Wednesday. I've had my title since last Thursday. I think, and I have had, I've shot it three different days so far. I'll shoot it tonight, um, try to shoot it tomorrow, try to shoot Friday, probably won't shoot it Saturday, we'll probably shoot it Sunday, and then I'll get on a plane Monday. Um, and I'm probably not going to do super well because I, I can't get through my third arrow. I'm starting to like move a lot because I just my muscles aren't in shape for it. Uh, and then I have a trade show that's Monday through Wednesday down there. And I've been told there's two, Joel told me there's two different uh, shops in Las Vegas that have indoor ranges that you can go shoot at. So I'm going to try to track down a place to shoot every day and just try to get the reps going and get into it and be ready. But I don't expect to do super well. You no, know, I, and won't, you, I won't be competitive. You weren't going I'm, there to necessarily shoot going, your best, right? You're going there. Yeah, to... No, I'm not. I'm going to participate and, um, Say hi to people and community shake hands deal. And community deal. Yeah. Well, any any of that stuff I do I, I, is a community deal. I wish I didn't keep score at all, ever. I just let's go have a good time and, yeah, I I get there's you know a, a lot of people at that thing that and they're everybody's trying to win and whatnot and kudos to them to do it. It'll be fun to watch. I've never been to that one, um, but I committed to that. Um, I'm contemplating going to Western Hunt Expo because I've never gone to that. That's Salt Lake City. Um, that's Salt Lake City, <laughs> and then probably take an extra day or two and go to Hoyt and go to Easton and chat with them for a while and probably try to build some content around that, even though that's not really my intent. Um, the recurve, the Hoyt recurve stuff, because I carry a ton of that stuff, but I don't know really well how to talk about it. And uh, I'd like to get a little bit more of an education in that. I mean, I know how to tune a recurve. I know how to adjust them and everything, but I don't know what the spiel is on this one versus that one or this type of material versus that type of material on your limb or why you would want it. And hopefully maybe work in education there. Plus when I did that, that Utah attack last year, they kind of gave me a hard time that I didn't like come see them when I was in their town. Um, so I would probably add a day and, at least and try to do that. Um, oh boy. Let's see. What's... I'm going to go to Big Sky. I'm going to go to Utah Tech. Sounds like we're going to do San Antonio Tech. Maybe we're doing another one. I don't know. I will try to do Top Pin because that's close by. I think I'm going to do Big Sky this year too. Cool, cool. Um, I feel like I'm missing stuff. What the heck? Why do people keep calling me? Oh, it's, it's Justin. That's not good. Hey, what's up? We're podcasting. What color was your belt you wore? It's WH. WH. All right. Apparently, yeah, I know what you're doing. It's not it. You really want to be on the podcast so bad, you got to call me while I'm doing it. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> you can just ask if you want to come No, on. no. I, it, ain't, it ain't even that long. All right, bye. <laughs> Is that it or no? Nope. Oh, okay. No. Well. Wrong cooler. I, I Every time we'd sell one, I'd reorder one. So there's one coming in every three or four days. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't sure which one was yours. Because so. that would be very important news. Well, that would be nice for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, oh, what else did I say I was going to go to and do? Oh, my God. Oh, it's cousin. This is this out there. Okay. Yeah, what's up, bud? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm talking. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Dig it where you want it. I already told you that. <laughs> All right, bud. <laughs> my uh, my cousin's a home builder here in Spokane, and they're they just started digging mom's house right next door here. Um, and he's like, hey, uh, where do you want me to put this thing? <laughs> like, put it where you think it goes, man. You're, you're the <laughs> yeah. expert. You don't, you don't come in and say, hey, how do I tune? I'm going to tune my own bow. You know, you no, know, I do that for you. You build mm-hmm. the house. Just do what you do, what you do, bud. Oh, man. But, uh, but yeah, that's been a, that's been an ongoing battle, um, with, uh, with the county to finally get that signed off. We've been working on that for, gosh, uh, seems like almost four months or five months. Um, and finally got it approved. And and whose hands did you have to shake, or whose baby did you have to kiss? That's uh, that's all him, man. That's he. Mm. he has oh, he's got to work them. that, yeah. Yeah, like he he does Permitting. that. He does that every day anyway. Um, you know, he gets a permitted houses regularly and deals with them. And he's uh, he's good at his job, so usually they're pretty happy. But we have some some land that is uh, here that they claim is floodplain possible wetlands and whenever that happens it's like 15 red flags go flying up in the air and oh well you can't you can't own possess or be anywhere near it for the next 10,000 years kind of crap um so in any event we finally got it approved and had a couple more stipulations on it but you know we're building a you wouldn't think it'd be such a big deal we're building a small little what they call an adu or additional dwelling it's like a mother-in-law yeah. suite kind of thing yeah i mean it's 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 actually a pretty good size house for for what an adu typically would be but it's not huge and it's at a higher elevation than the existing house by a pretty good amount. And they're giving us grief. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Red right. tape, man. Yeah, I want to do that. And uh, really hoping to build a, a personal shop on my property, too. And now that we went through all this, we got pretty good graph of where things will be a problem where they won't. And that's not a place where someone lives, so it will probably be fine. Um, but now that we're finally jumped through this, I can start to address that mm. so well you said you're bringing your title but talk about your um accessories i have the um the qad integrated spring rest uh, we got our original 38 that i did that bow review on that uh back in september and that was the rest that was on it really? and we don't normally carry it and it was sitting uh it was sitting around the shop and i when i last shot like target archery a lot. I shot a spring rest, so I was like, "Well, here, give me that. I'll put that on there." So I threw that on there, and so far I like it pretty good. Um, I have an Excel Achieve XP because the new Pro model hasn't come in, and I was like, I called them, and I'm like, "Hey, one, I need to review this site so I can make a video on it, and two, when can you get me one? And I'll pay for faster shipping if you can get it here before I go to Vegas, and I'll just take it to Vegas and use it." Mm-hmm. Well, they uh, they she, didn't have it ready. Which is the best way to get some experience with. Someone. Well, one would one would assume. Um, and then uh, so my rep was like, "Hey, if he shows up in Vegas and you're in your booth selling these to the public, he's probably going to get upset at you." <laughs> it's like, well, we're probably going to have them by then, but we're not going to have them to send out yet. Yeah. But if he wants to come to the booth and come get one, we'll do it. I'm like, so you're telling me I'm gonna come show up with a brand new site and bolt it on there right yeah. before Vegas? Now, if I wanted some built-in excuses, ooh, howdy, I could really do that. Well, and if like, there's well, anyone that's put a brand new site it. on here and it fell apart, and blah, if there's blah, blah. anyone that would do it, they're talking to their core audience. You know? <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty dumb when it comes to that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I can do it. Give me that. We'll yeah. figure it out. Um, so I might change that. I might not. I'm still shooting a, a UV three um, pin. In my scope, and I'm shooting a six power lens, but I'm running a just a fiber through it with the light kit. Mm-hmm. Um, your bars. Well, are they going to be your bars? <laughs> I don't have an answer yet. So I am coming out with a target stabilizer, which has a different carbon in it than the hunting stabilizers have, like significantly different. And it's been stuck in the port because it comes from uh, Vietnam. The material does, because Victory makes it for me, and their uh, all their stuff comes out of Vietnam. 
And then it's assembled in Mexico and then com- comes into the U.S. and it goes from there. Which, mind you, everybody's carbon arrows other than Easton's are made overseas. Everyone's. Uh, China's actually got two of the major brands now. Um, Gold Tips Mexico, uh, Black Eagle, and Ultra are both in China. Um, Easton's U.S., but some of Easton's in China, too. So it's not all U.S., but it's mostly U.S. Uh, at any event, um, there's a possibility I'll get Material Friday. So if I get Material Friday, I'll chop it up and glue it together and try to figure it out before I leave on Monday. <laughs> but if not, I've got a set of Conquests on there that I got last year. Um, and I'm using an Excel V-bar bracket. And stock match grade strings, which haven't moved a millimeter. Uh, they're doing great. And I'm shooting a Onyx Click Heavy. Um, and Black Eagle Arrows at the moment, because that's what we had 27s of in the shop that we had points and all the components and whatnot. It's like every other arrow we had we were missing something on, and that was the one that I could get put together quick enough, which is what most of the guys shoot anyway. So I was like, all right, fine. Give me some of those. We'll see how they work. Um, And it's it's coming together pretty decently, but I'm like I said, I'm I'm moving more than I should be, and it's not the bow's fault because that bow sits like a rock to most people. I just don't have the reps in my body yet. Um, and I don't know if I'll have enough reps in my body by the time that rolls around, but I will keep shooting when it's over with, and I shouldn't have excuses when it rolls around to reading. And I wanted to shoot that bow because I was either going to shoot that or a Super X because those are the two new target bows for the most part out of the major brands, and that's what most of the the guys that are serious are shooting. So I, I didn't change to a Matthews because I have some affiliation with Matthews. That bow and the Super X are the two new models out there and i'm always going to grab a new model whatever it is no matter what because i want to have some intimacy with what it is now does it help that at the rushmore rumble the top six scores that got turned in were all titles to begin with in the ranking rounds does it help that records are being broken with that boat every weekend Mm, might be something to it but i will always shoot what i feel is the most forgiving or accurate thing for what i'm trying to do and that bow was the most intriguing to me um, I actually had to pay for that bow. Well, I didn't ask. I didn't ask for it because uh, of time and how short they were. I mean, every time we'd get one in, it would be gone. We'd sell it immediately. We've probably sold 30, 40 of them so far. Um, and I took one out of inventory. I paid for it. So um, nobody gave me a bow. Nobody's sponsoring me. All the haters down below can just <laughs> shut the hell up. Um, I'm just shooting what I think is the most forgiving thing. And if I didn't shoot that, it would have been a Super X because that bow not only does it have a deflexed riser, um, it's stupid accurate, getting all kinds of great reviews, and that uh, I would have picked one of those two. Bowtech didn't make a new target bow this year. I don't really like the way they handled that situation anyway, so I don't know if I would have gone back to shooting their target bow. Um, but they didn't even make a new target bow this year. So the two significant bows that were built this year is one's from PSC and one's from Matthews, and I like that bow. So it seemed the most appealing to me and the people that I had talked to that had shot them quite a bit. Both were positive, but I got amazing feedback from the Matthews. So, yeah, next time I get a yellow one with black limbs in, I'll steal that. And technically, I can't, I'm not stealing for myself. So, but <laughs> I am fully paying for that boat. So, yeah. Now, if I love it and want to commit to it and whatnot, I may call and say, hey, will you send me one of these for personal use for free? And then I'll sell the one that was in the inventory. But I'm not there yet. And once again, when they send me a bow for free, it does not commit me to anything. I can do whatever oh, I want still. That. Yeah. So there's not, I don't have to compromise myself in any way to get a bow for free. Don't want to compromise yourself. Now you take a check. That's a different conversation. Speaking of... Free gear means pretty much I'm playing with it and you're giving it to me. Thanks. Yeah. Um, back on that Bowtech thing. Mm-hmm. It did leave a little tarnish for me as well. Like, I... God, it was tough because I'm like, do I want to involve the politics of what these companies are doing with the bow I want to shoot? And that's... It kind of made me feel like I almost... I wanted... After shooting all those bows, I wanted the bow tech because it made sense for the things I want to do with this sport, which is be able to tune my bow, work on my bow, mm-hmm. get to know my equipment, and uh, work on the stuff with the most user-friendly. And 
Botech fills that category really, really well. Mm -hmm. But also, they had that whatever you'd want to call it at the end of the year, and it's like, oh, you know, now do I want to promote this product? We should call it the decision. The decision, yeah. Yeah, just like the Braun when he left Cleveland and made it a freaking spectacle on ESPN. Yeah. It's like, oh, what a poor way to do that. <laughs> do I want to promote this product? And I don't know. It's it's. I still have a little bit of an uneasy feeling about that because it's such a great tool, but they made some poor decisions. So right. I guess I would like to see what they do next. Yeah. We'll see what they do next. Yeah, I would like to see. If you um, follow uh, Archery Hooligan, they will promote a whole bunch of bows and with girls in bikinis or something off Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So hopefully they, uh, hopefully there's something to that and it works its way out. Hopefully but. they do a good job because they do make a good bow, a good product, and um, for someone who wants to tune their own bow, it's 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 a great product. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of positives to it, and I, I, for the longest time, that company just didn't think it was worth anything to pay people to shoot target, and they took a different path for the past couple of years, which surprised me because I didn't necessarily disagree with that concept. It's like, how many bows are you selling because so and so won with your bow? And I, that's a hard thing to quantify. It really Very is. Very difficult. Yeah, and they're not they're not really into donating money to the sport just to keep that part of the sport running um i can see matthews doing that and just saying yeah we'll do it because we feel that's a valuable part of the sport so we're going to help support it by paying people to do it that kind of thing and that's where kyle and tim both ended up but mm -hmm. regardless it's uh just a just an it's interesting a situation cluster. it is a cluster it is and it's it's hard if you're trying to be supportive in target archery to feel supportive to that company absolutely like, like it's huge and I, I think I said this last time we talked about it. Our sales stopped immediately. Like, we were still selling Reckonings up until then. Like, we've sold them all year long. Mind you, they're pretty much all online. That doesn't surprise me. Um, we sold them all year long. And then, granted, it was, like, right after hunting season got rolling. So it's typically not a time of year you'll sell a whole bunch of target bows. But it stopped completely. We were still selling TRXs, you know, before the title came out mm -hmm. at that point, right? And then when the title came out, man, they're flying off the shelf. On Just, that thread, whew. on that thread, I am going to X my reckoning. Not yeah. because of what Bowtech did, just because initially when I got it, I was like, oh, hybrid bow, I'm going to hunt with it, I'll shoot 3D with it. Now I'm like, I just want a full-size target bow. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just did what you did, which is look at what are the target bows that people are really loving. And um, yeah, we'll talk about that soon. The bow's not here yet, so we'll we'll talk about what that bow is. But call that a tease, Tim. If um, Tim yeah, the that tease. Is a tease, Tim the tease. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, we gotta freaking get the bow before we talk about what bow it is. But yeah, the reckoning is gonna get it's gonna get Xnade, and I still do think if if you're a reckoning owner, I think it is a good bow. I think it's got all the adjustability, tunability. Um, but personally. I felt like it might not have been that forgiving on some of my um, on some of my worst shots. Yeah, I mean, there's a. I, I don't think there's a thing wrong with that bow. Honestly, I think it's a really great bow. I think you have to adjust it to each individual person the way they want to shoot it and the way they want to hold it. And some shooting styles will do better with certain bows than others. But there's nothing wrong with that bow. It's just one you didn't change it, so it's not new. So now you're shooting an older model, you know. And if you're gonna stay on top of the the products and whatnot, which is kind of part of the deal. You probably ought to have something yeah. that's current for that year. Um, and that's really my reasoning behind it is that there was new stuff and they didn't make new stuff. So I didn't even consider them. And out of the bows that we sell online, those were the two. So well, and part of my sense. reasoning too, is I want, I wanted to continue to further my knowledge with different manufacturers. Sure. Yeah. Be a little more familiar with them. A little more versed across mm -hmm. the. Nothing wrong with that. Across the board. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that plan, man. Yeah. Yeah. So it's exciting. Are you interested in shooting any of the um, our local 3D stuff? I actually will be shooting um, Coeur d'Alene's, what do they call that, the Farragut, uh, 1st of April. Um, so Bobby California's coming up. He's bringing his son with him for that, that weekend. He's staying with uh, Justice, also known as Speed Goat. 
Uh, and then Bighorn, which is Brandon, the creator of the belt, and Pappy are coming up for all of that shoot. So we're all gonna oh, nice. go to that shoot uh, on Saturday and go to go to lunch and then go to axe throwing or something in the afternoon or whatnot. So I've got it on my my schedule. So I will be going to that shoot. Any of the other local ones, I don't know. I just got to look at my weekends. I've got, like, it's kind of nuts. I still haven't planned a, a bear hunter bear trip yet, um, which is likely to happen somewhere in that May to June-ish thing. I have yep. a, a daughter graduating from high school this year. Don't know if I'm going to do anything as far as, like, a trip or anything around that. Um, yeah, I don't know. And I haven't set my hunting schedule at all, which I should here pretty soon. So I don't know. I'm, I know I'm going to be traveling a lot. I know I'm going to be doing a lot, and I'm sure it'll be more than what we just discussed. If I'm not gone at least once a month, I'll be surprised, and I could be gone two to three times a month, just depending on what it is. So, yeah, it, uh, it'll be a bit of a whirlwind, folks, but it should be a good time. Yeah. I think on that note, we'll call it a pod. Your homework, uh... your homework is you have to go Karen the Karens. Give us... <laughs> Go fight the good fight in the reviews. It, yeah. it helps us out. I mean, if you're listening to this and you're listening to this regularly, it takes you a couple of seconds to go leave a positive review. And that helps. You know, where we want to grow this to where it's significant. You know, the more this the more this grows, the more, you know, the voices can actually do something in this industry and make a change. I mean, and uh, don't get me wrong, I really appreciate the support that we've gotten over the over the over the time anyway. And the voice is already starting to get kind of loud, uh, which is great, um, but we still want to, we still want it to grow because if you're not growing, you're dying, right? So we need, we need them, uh, them reviews to help it look more significant. So please do. Yeah, Just and take what do we got to, what do we got to do to cost get, you nothing? What do we got to do to get Joe Rogan on the podcast? Never happened. <laughs> <laughs> He's got way more important things to do. Well, he loves archery. Sure. Uh, like in the back of my brain on a prayer, maybe he'd like, do a comedy tour that actually came by here. And then maybe. Maybe. Because I'd, I'd probably be able to get him to come shoot the range. Yeah. I might have to shut it down to do it, but I wish I would do. Absolutely. Um, and that that would be really cool, but I, yeah, I, don't, I don't doubt it. Especially since you were, you've been such a fan of him for a long time, and I've been a podcast listener of his, but you're, like, loyal. Like, you listen to all of them. I listen to everyone. Yeah. yeah. Even if I'm not really interested in the person, I still listen to everyone. Yeah. It's good, but you know, like I said, that guy's dude, that's a, that's a, that's an ask I'd never make. Yeah, but he loves shooting his bow, and yeah. we got a great range here. Yeah, oh, if he if he happens to be touring and comes through the area, then maybe there's a chance, or at least you know, maybe you help shoot. you know work on his bow a little bit, help him with his archery form sure. a little or something. Yeah, give him a couple nuggets. It's more than more than willing to share. That'd yeah, be great. We're gonna sign off. Wish Josh luck. Watch them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, luck's not going to matter. Yeah. I'll, I'll just, I'm there to have a good time. And, uh, we'll and depending have, on how bad it is, I might have a real good time. <laughs> and we'll have, a, yeah, we'll have a full breakdown Ooh. podcast of the event because that'll be, I'm, I'm interested to hear how it goes. And we got another shooter here, Michael, that we wish very well down there. And Michael's um, got a way better chance than I Yeah, Michael's, so. Michael's doing Michael's pretty damn good. Very well. And he's also shooting a title 38. Yeah. So there's that. Okay. That's that.